been called many things. He's a silent guardian. Like a flying rodent. A watchful protector. King Crusader. A dark knight. But he's got only one name. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Batman speaking. The Batman. Batman was introduced in May 1939 in Detective Comics 27. Four years later, he came to the big screen in a 15-chapter movie serial. Co-creator Bob Kane hated the project and was quoted as calling it a propaganda vehicle. But was it? Batman was unusual among superheroes in the 40s in that his stories rarely touched on the war. Only about a dozen of his covers even promoted war bonds and you could count on one hand the amount of stories that involved the fight against the Axis. But this story isn't very different from the comics. Batman does take government orders in this serial, Your first special assignment from Washington. but it was standard practice at this time for censors to change vigilantes to secret agents. On account of our special assignment from Uncle Sam, our success depends on keeping our identity a secret. And Batman was a duly deputized member of Gotham PD in the 1966 television show, which Kane loved. So again, what did he feel was changed? We have Bruce Wayne, a millionaire who's secretly Batman. Dick Grayson, his ward, alias Robin. Wayne Manor, his home. And Alfred the butler, who was changed in the comics to resemble the serial's depiction. The story takes place in and around Gotham City. And Batman has an ally on the police force, although here it's Captain Arnold instead of Commissioner Gordon. There's no actual Batmobile, but there is a Batcave, and that was actually introduced here and added to the comics later. There is a shocking amount of anti-Japanese racism in the serial, though, and it's all directed to the villain, Dr. Daka, Japanese spy and an entirely new character. This was probably the source of Kane's ire. Batman's rogues gallery is almost universally recognized as the best in comics, arguably in all of fiction. Most of them had been introduced in the four years from his debut to the release of the serial, but the filmmakers ignored them in favor of an original character. But was that always the intention? Rumor has it that J. Carol Nash was actually hired to play the Joker, not Dr. Daka. There's a lack of surviving documentation to concretely support this, but the serial's announcement poster does feature the clown prince of crime, not Daka. This same poster was cropped when the serial was actually released, removing the Joker. In the film, Dr. Daka wears the Joker's signature carnival barker costume, and his hideout is inside a theme park attraction, much like the Joker in the comics. Daka frequently wears a broad grin, giggles, and shows a psychotic disregard for his own henchmen even displaying a willingness to sacrifice them to his toothsome pets. You want something special, huh? At one point in the serial, Daka appears in a samurai costume, and his makeup and fake accent are commented on. This is an odd choice if he was in fact a Japanese agent, but it makes complete sense if he was originally scripted as the Joker in disguise. If this is what happened, it actually set the pattern for the Joker's interpretations. Batman has always remained essentially the same, if viewed through different lenses, but the Joker has always changed to reflect the boogeymen of the times. Today, he's presented either as a flashy, tattooed gangbanger or an unhinged, paranoid conspiracist looking to tear down society. Following 9-11, Christopher Nolan portrayed him as a terrorist. It stands to reason that in the 1940s, he would have been interpreted as an Axis agent of some kind. All of which is to say, maybe what Bob Kane saw was not a corruption of his creation, but the first of many evolutions that would allow it to thrive for decades. And maybe the Batman serial is a faithful adaptation after all.